My name is David Hallberg. I'm a principal dancer with American Ballet Theatre. I started with tap and jazz when I was nine, obsessed. My inspiration was Fred Astaire. And um, then that was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Then I moved with my family to Phoenix, Arizona. And I started ballet training kind of late, actually, like at 13. And I, um, I have to say it was like a calling. Ballet was not emphasized like at my jazz studio. I saw the Nutcracker and I fell in love with ballet. And I had a great teacher in Phoenix, uh, Kiwon Han, who is now the director at Washington Ballet School. And he recognized that I was starting late, but also recognized kind of my talent. And he said, if you want to be a classical ballet dancer, you have a lot of work to do in, in like four years time. But, um, but I'm willing to work with you, you know, privately and whatever. So we started uh, when I was 13. I, I then quit jazz and tap and went full force into ballet. And it was, we trained for four years very, very, very intensely. And I, I remember it being really the, the hardest four years of my training. Um, working until like 10 p.m., uh, two classes a day, technique classes, then modern and private lessons and six days a week and, you know, the whole nine yards. And eventually, hopefully there was some sort of product that he saw. Um, and honestly, to this day, like my hat is off to him. So then I finished um, training with him at around 16, 17. I went to uh, the ABT Summer Intensive in 1999 and then in 2000. And in 1999, um, I met Kevin McKenzie and he offered me a studio company contract uh, for my once I graduated high school. So then I decided I wanted to do a year of like kind of finishing school. So I went to Paris Opera School. I sent a video to them, kind of cold turkey, and did not think I would get in. Thought I was American and didn't speak French and I was too old. And I got in, which was great. Um, so I spent a year there, my senior year of high school, which was a very um, humbling experience. <laughs> uh, it is an absolutely unbelievable school. The speed at which they work, the training, the facilities, the teachers, the institution of Paris Opera really is, is um, something to marvel at. It was more the experience of being like at Paris Opera, being, seeing the company dance every weekend, being in the dorms with everyone else who was French. I was the only American, and and it, it was it broadened my horizons tenfold. It was really unbelievable. So I spent a year there, uh, having highs and lows and whatever. But like I said, it was a humbling experience. So I didn't go to be like kind of the star. I went to learn and that's exactly what happened. I was kind of pushed in the back and, and um, treated like an American, kind of. So uh, I had a great teacher, Jacques Nemon. He was really great. And it was when Claude Bessy was, was the director. And she's really what made the school what it is. Um, Elizabeth Platel is now the director, who's, who's great also. But Claude was, um, was a fantastic director. I mean, she... She was running it since the 70s, you know. Brought up Sylvie Guillem, brought up, you know, everyone. So after that, I knew I was going back to ABT to join Studio Company. So I joined Studio Company, um, had a very interesting year. I, I kind of went in like thinking I would be, I would, I don't know, I wanted to join the company right away. I wanted to be a principal dancer in like two weeks. You know, I, I wanted it. And um, that year was was uh, was kind of a reality check, like that I do I need to 
to have a base, and Studio Company was that base, which is now ABT2. Um, John Meehan was my director, and, and he was like a father to me, and I really learned a lot. I mean, we were around, around the company. We weren't working with the company, but we were watching, you know, all the dancers that I looked up to um, when I was training. And then I got into the company a year later. That was great, and you know, I slowly started to get some, some roles and things and opportunities, and, and it, it's just been a constant growth process. I, I spent um, two years in the core, then two years as a soloist, two or three years as a soloist, and then I was promoted to principal when I was 23. So, and now I've, uh, I've been a principal for three years, four years, and you know, like I say, it's it's been a it's been a growth process. It's been it's been um, it's been really I don't know. Just I haven't felt like when I became a principal, I was a, a finished dancer. You know, it's it's just been this constant growth, this constant discovery, um, and ABT really has facilitated that. They've really like it's been my my, my kind of home and and been able to grow. I'm fortunate in a sense that like I, I'm given opportunities to go out and um, perform elsewhere, which to me is, is essential for, for myself as a dancer. Um, I, I look back on the experiences that I've spent um, doing galas or guesting with a company or whatever. And it's, it re-inspires me, it reinvigorates kind of my, my curiosity as a dancer, my, my interest in my work. Not to say that ABT doesn't facilitate that because that is my base. I mean, ABT is my, is my home and I'm given this repertoire at ABT that's unparalleled in a sense. I mean, last, you know, yesterday I was dancing Romeo in Macmillan's Romeo and Juliet's, and that to me is is one of the most beautiful productions in classical ballet. And I wouldn't be given that if had I had I not been at ABT. And I have to say, you know, they I wasn't the type of dancer that created a sensation at 18. You know, there are those dancers that. They step on the stage and everyone freaks out, you know. Um, it's been a growth for me and it's, it's taken patience, a lot of patience on my part because I'm so, I ask so much of myself and I question so much um, and you know I'm always searching for more and I always want more and it's never enough yada yada yada. And, they have been, they being Kevin McKenzie, the coaches at, at ABT, whoever, um, have been patient with me. They've taken their time, they've taught me things, they've explained things, they've re-explained things, they've allowed me to um, kind of fail in a sense. I mean, I look back at some performances and it was really marginal ABT. Uh, uh, a product. I mean, I have to say, you know, and 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 I'm fortunate that like they've given me the other chance and the next chance and the next chance. Um, and therefore, I've been able to grow. I've been able to um, to stay inspired because the classical, to me, the classical repertoire is so demanding and. The reason I was attracted to classical ballet when I was 13 or 14 was because it was never enough. It was like, it was never perfect enough. It, could, it can always be better. As hard as you work, you can always work harder. And to me, that is, that's what drives me to classical ballet. Um, the precedent is set so high. And dancers continue to, to reach even higher and higher and you know there's always more and there's always better out there and there's always a nuance of, a, of an artist that that you hadn't even thought of that you see on stage and, and 
I just feel like ABT has really given me that opportunity. Not to say that the opportunities that I'm given outside of ABT, they fulfill me just as much. I mean, I was in Japan uh, a year ago working with Johan Koberg on his production of La Sofide, and it was an unparalleled experience. Um, I had I'd never danced La Sofide, and he gave me kind of these shadings to, to James, who's the main character, that I would have never found by myself. And, you know, I was given this, this really great opportunity to, um, to discover something else that, that hadn't been presented in the ABT rep yet. And, and I was, you know, in Tokyo for three weeks. And so I was, it's a balance, you know. I mean, ABT is my home and I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm committed. They give me, you know, Alexei Ratmansky's now the resident choreographer, uh, and I do all these huge full-length ballets. But then I'm also given like great opportunities, you know, outside the company. I think a lot of people are surprised to hear <laughs> me say that I my one of my real passions is the avant-garde, um, in a sense that when I'm on stage, you know. It's the prince, you know, you're, you're Prince Siegfried, yada yada. But I greatly appreciate and have this undying passion for the weirdest, like, most out there, crazy type of performance art in a sense, or dance, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is that is kind of an underlying um, curiosity of mine, and like I said, it always surprises people because because I'm on stage and I'm the tall blonde, you know. Um, but I I mean there are, there are works that I've seen like Anne Live Young. Um, Jerome Bell is like a huge fan. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jerome Bell's. Um, just these like these artists that are in the dance field, if you want to call it that, but they they question it and they push it further and they 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 intertwine it with other things. And I'll never forget seeing uh, Jerome Bell's show must go on at Dance Theater Workshop. And I went knowing he had done a piece for Paris Opera. And um, and not knowing what to expect, and he just he transformed me, and his work just like opened a whole new like idea of how dance could be. I feel like classical ballet is is this art form that is so it's so historical, um, and it's so correct, it's so planned, um, you know, there's the repertoire, there's the Swan Lakes and the Giselles and the Romeos, but it, it's so, it, I don't know, it's just so interesting that to see when people view it like from a different perspective, and I had, you know, I had a balletic upbringing, so that is like new, it's like a new page for me. I love classical ballet, but I also love art in general. I love the process of creation. In Swan Lake, you create your role. You create your own skin in Siegfried or the Swan of Dead. To me, it's, it's when you're creating something that's like when you're truly, I don't know, when you're truly in your own skin. It's like having a ballet created on you. You, you feel it, you feel the movement, you feel it, it's in your own skin because it was created on you. And that I crave. Um, and I crave it on a completely different spectrum from classical ballet. Like, like literally, I want something so, so on a different realm of, of what I do on an everyday basis.
that's definitely one of my one of my um, aspirations as a dancer that I haven't really explored yet.